Welcome back to Learning to Code with Python. Lesson number seven, input and conditional statements. So up to now, all of our programs have been non-interactive. We just run them and sit back to watch what happens. But what if you want to be able to ask a question in your program and have the person running it be able to answer? Well, let's find out. So I'm starting a new program here, and we're going to leave Fred the Turtle behind for now, because we won't need him for this. So first, let's ask the person running the program the user to tell us their name. To do that, I'm going to use the input function. So the way the input function works is, in the parentheses you put the question that you want to ask. So this is what the user will see when they run the program. And then it'll wait for them to type in a response. And whatever response they type in will get saved into the variable name. So now that we have the user's name saved in the variable name, we can say hello. The print function is pretty neat. It lets you put more than one item inside the parentheses if you want, and it'll print all of them out. You just have to put a comma between them. So I'm going to print out this part in quotes saying hello, and then whatever the variable name is equal to. So let's run it and see what happens. So what's your name? There we go. All right, at this point, we need to talk about something that the input function does that you need to watch out for. Here's an example. Let's say in our program we're going to ask the user what their age is. So we ask them, how old are you? OK. And when it asks you the question, let's say we type in a number. OK. I'll say a number. OK. So now that number 30 has been stored in the variable age. And we could print out age. But here's something that you may not expect. What if we said, next year, you will be, and we'll put age plus one. Now you would expect it would print out 30 plus one. But instead you get an error message. The error message says it can't convert int to string. Well, what does that mean? Well, the variable age, if we look at what type it is, and type is a way to tell you what kind of data is stored in that variable. It's a string. Anytime you type in something with input, it saves it as a string, meaning it doesn't think of it as a number. It just thinks of it as some string like this. But that means that we can't add to it, right? Because that's an error message. So we need a way to tell the computer that we want this data that we input to be treated as a number so that we can add one to it. We can do that with a function called int. Int basically takes a string and will convert it into a number. So if we say int age plus 1, that's what we wanted. So if we were to try our print statement again, we need to make sure we just put int before age. And that's what we wanted. Let's ask for a different number now in our program. We're going to ask how many ninjas are attacking. And remember, we want this to be a number, so I want to make sure and put the int function around that. Now I want my program to do something different depending on how many ninjas are attacking. If there's more than 50, I want to print out that's too many. Otherwise, we can print out something like we can take them. But here's the thing, that requires us to do something called a branch, or a conditional statement. That means we want different commands to run depending on a different circumstance. So, for example, so here's what that looks like. We use the command if to indicate we're going to do a branch. So this conditional statement will say if ninjas is greater than 50. 
So the computer is going to make that comparison. It's going to compare whatever ninjas, the value of ninjas is. And if it's greater than 50, then it's going to execute this block of code that comes after. Remember, just like we did in our for loops, we have a block of code that's indented underneath the for loop for what commands we wanted it to repeat. Same thing here. So this command, print that's too many, will only execute if ninjas is greater than 50. If, if this comparison right here is false, then this command does not get executed. So let's try that out. So if I say, let's put a bigger number first. If I say 51, then it prints out, that's too many. But what about if I run it again? And this time, I'm going to say that there's fewer. So there's only 24 attacking. I see nothing happened. So how do we add a second option? Well, we can use the keyword else. So this gives us another block of code that's the alternative case. So if ninjas is greater than 50, you should do this. But if it's not, you're going to do this, which is print. We can take them. So now our program has two paths it can follow. Depending on the value of ninjas, it will either run this print statement or this print statement, but only one. Let's add one more option. Let's say that we have three branches that we want this program to take. If it's greater than 50, that's fine. But what about maybe somewhere in between? Well, we can add a third choice by adding L if. Now, L if you can think of as short for else if. So it's basically going to do another test. We're going to say L if ninjas is greater than 20. And if that's the case, then we're going to print, maybe we can do it. OK, so now we have three different paths. If ninjas is greater than 50, this happens. None of the rest does. If ninjas is not greater than 50, then it goes to the next option. Is it greater than 20? If it is, do this. And if it wasn't either of these, then the last case is this one. So let's try that out. Let's try 18. If 18 is not greater than 20, so we can take them. And we'll try one more. And let's say we're somewhere in the middle. Branching is a key concept in programming, and we'll make use of it quite a lot as we go through this series. In our next lesson, we'll use some if statements to make a simple game.